Hi there, Paul C here for Essential Lightroom. In this video, I want to go through and show you how far you can push the photographs you take when you may think that they're beyond saving. So if you take a look at the image on screen at the moment, this was shot with a really bright sky, really cloudy day. And as you can see, the problem we have is that the main foreground and midground and the mountains and so on are completely and utterly flat and dull, whereas the sky is fairly blown out in the top left hand corner. So let's take a look in this video how we can recover this image and see what can be done inside Lightroom. So this is a test exposure shot that I took recently on a trip to North Wales and as you can see we've got an inherent problem when we're dealing with landscapes you've got the sky is probably two or three stops difference from the ground itself and without using a graduator or a hard stop filter we're always going to have a problem like this. Obviously there are a couple of ways you could deal with it you could use one of those filters like I say or you could ultimately take multiple exposures and then you could combine those using either tone mapping or you could use them through a HDR and then control the whole tonal information in there. You don't always have that option though. So I'm going to show you how easy it is or how far you can actually take your images to get them back. So something like this you may throw away, you might like the composition but you don't like the actual end result of it. Let's take a look at what we could do with all that. So if we open up the basics panel, there's a couple of ways we can approach this. We can approach it as an overall image or we can approach it from the certain aspects. Now I'm going to do that to start off with, I'm going to deal with the sky and I'm going to deal with the ground separately and then we'll process the overall image afterwards. So there's a couple of things we can do. Let's focus first of all on this ground to get some, some brightness back into that. So let's grab the exposure, let's bump that up until we start to see some of that colour coming back in. And you see that obviously compounds the issue with the sky, everything gets even more blown out. So let's take the clarity, let's give it a little bit of that. Don't want to go crazy with this because we'll start to get haloing effects on there. And let's come into the highlights and shadows and so on. I'm going to leave the sky because I want to deal with that separately, completely separately. But what we're going to do is concentrate on getting the tonal information in the image itself looking much better. So let's bump those shadows up a little bit. Let's bring the blacks down so we retain some contrast there. And we'll do the same with the contrast slider itself. So there we go. That's looking a little better. We've now got some of that detail back in there. So the next thing we need to deal with the sky itself. So let's come up and choose the graduated filter or press M on the keyboard. Then we're going to come over the sky and we're going to hold the shift key down on the keyboard just to drag that down, position it roughly where I want, probably around about there. And now we can start to control the way the sky looks independently of the foreground. Now obviously we're going to get an overlap at this point and we can move that around if we need to and adjust the actual graduation between the two. But let's come through and let's grab the exposure on there and let's start to bring that down. Don't want to go too far with that, we'll use the highlights to retain some of that detail in there and you can see even though the image looked like it was completely and utterly blown out you can see most if not all of the information that we require for the sky is still in there but like I say if we didn't use this method we kind of throw this photograph away so let's just adjust the graduation on there I don't want it to affect the mountain range too much while still getting the effect on the sky so that's looking pretty good so let's come in and let's just Take the clarity up on there a little bit to give the sky and the clouds a little bit more definition. And the white, we're going to bump that up a little bit to get that sort of nice pop in the sky. And let's take a look at the before and after. So there's where we were. There's where we are. So you can see there's a huge amount of definition that your camera is actually capturing. You may think is not there from first looking. So now that we've done that, we've got a much more balanced image. We can click on done on there. And now I can go through and process the overall image to get exactly what I want. And this again is a great method when you're working with black and whites because that'll give you a nice sort of tonal information. Now there is one caveat to this and one of the problems you're going to find is the fact that because we're pushing this, you can see we get a lot of noise in the image itself. So if I get to somewhere like this, you can see there's a lot of noise and grain in the image. Now obviously we can combat some of that by going into the detail section and we can use the luminance and the color sliders on there to deal with the noise, but you are going to get some softening in there. So it's worth considering, is the image worth saving? But if you think it is and you don't mind that grain or you can compensate for it by using those controls in there, you can end up with an image that you ultimately would have thrown away on first sight. So that's how I would deal quickly with checking to see if an image is worth working with and seeing if we can save the highlights or the shadows, whichever part is under or overexposed in an image. So spending a little time going through and editing the image fully 
we've gone from this to something like this which I hope you can see is a considerable difference in an image that we would have thrown away. You can salvage a lot more than you may think you can from an image by using the methods covered in this video and obviously some of the other methods we've covered on the channel itself. Well, I hope you found this useful. I hope it's given you an insight into how you can edit your images, things that you may have thrown away or think that are overexposed. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button on the channel to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. And until next time, Take care.